only thing we have to fear is fear itself. <laughs> the National Weather Service has issued a severe thunderstorm warning. Welcome. Welcome. To the Common Sense Practical Prepper Podcast. Where prepping doesn't have to be complicated or expensive. Coming to you from a well-defended off-grid compound high in the mountains. (laughs) Coming to you from his Florida room in Richmond, Virginia. (laughs) Neither off-grid nor well-defended, unless you count as chickens and cats. Here is your host, Keith. Hey everybody, this is Keith and welcome back to the Common Sense Practical Prepper Podcast, episode 55. Today is August 24th, 2023. All right, a couple weeks ago we had the wildfires in Maui and allegedly or apparently that was started by some power lines that were knocked down in some like hurricane force winds. I saw some videos and the dust and the wind was really kicking up. So apparently these power lines fell into some tall grass, which uh, started the wildfires. And truly tragic. Uh, I don't know what the death toll is. It changes all the time. I've heard stories that there's several hundred children that are still missing, but I haven't been able to get a lot of information. A lot of folks will tell you there's been like a media blackout for, uh, for Maui and for the wildfires. Now, I don't know if that's exactly true. I have not seen... A lot of coverage, so I really, I really don't know. I don't have a lot to compare it to with other natural disasters or other wildfires. But some folks will tell you that because I don't know Oprah and a bunch of mega rich people live there that they don't want media all over the island. So there's you know there's roadblocks and people can't get to the island. And I saw a couple of videos on YouTube where folks were on boats and they were bringing their boats from different parts of the island different parts of Hawaii and actually, you know, going up on the beach there in Maui and, you know, handing out food, water, everything, garbage bags, a lot of things that these people need. So in addition to the alleged media blackout and the roadblocks keeping people away, apparently people are being evicted from their properties. Now, some of these properties, I saw some drone footage yesterday. Some of these properties made it through unscathed or very, very minor damage. And of course, on YouTube and on other sites on the internet are all the conspiracy theorists. And I heard one was that Jeff Bezos hired a private fire department or a group of private firefighters to keep water on his home. Okay. I don't know where I'll get out the yellow pages or I'll Google fire 10 firefighters rent, rent a firefighter day or firehouse rent on the weekends, $200 an hour. Are there people sitting at home waiting for their phone to ring saying, I need you to get on a plane now. I need you to get to Maui because you and these nine other people that I'm going to call are the only people in the world that I can trust to keep my house from burning down. I don't think that's true. I don't think Jeff Bezos, Oprah, and all these people called their firefighter friends who then came to keep their homes from burning down. I grew up in the Midwest. You guys have seen it on TV. When a tornado comes through, it will take out an entire city block, but it'll leave one house and like the swing sets knocked over. It's like it never even happened. There is no rhyme or reason to a dam- to damage on some of these tornadoes. Now, some of the, the damage is just so catastrophic. You can tell exactly what was happening, happening and everything in its path was destroyed. But again, I've seen tornadoes go down one side of a street, get back up in the air, I guess, you know, they're not making, it's not making contact with the ground and then half a mile away, drop back down and then start taking out um, other parts of the neighborhood or, or the parking lot or what have you. So there really is no rhyme or reason. Now you have a fire that's being driven by high winds. Winds are whipping around. All it takes is, you know, some embers from one fire to jump three or four houses. So the houses, you know, between the fire and the embers, they're fine. Again, it's, it's not rocket science. All the conspiracy theorists are running around saying that they were said intentionally. One person was like, look, this fire's burning at a perfect ellipse or something. And they highlighted this ellipse in, in this particular, particular video. So apparently to them, that means it's, it's man-made. Then some guy gets on there and he believes that it was caused by a focus direct energy weapon. 
I guess that's a laser, a big laser that sh- who knows where it is. It's in space. Somebody said it's in, in Antarctica. Somebody said it's on a ship. Somebody said you can put it on a submarine to so the submarine surfaces and blast Maui with this, uh, this uh, energy, direct energy weapon. And that's what starts the fire. I don't think any of that happened. I think it was high winds. I think a power line came down like everybody says, and it started this fire. The wind's whipping around 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. You're not going to be able to contain it. Serious loss of life and serious, serious damage uh, to uh, certain parts of Maui. And then that one particular town that name escapes me at the moment. Okay. We talk about the economy. I want to talk about home loans. Currently, the I think the average mortgage 30-year fixed is about like 7.5, 7.8, something like that. Not even three years ago, it was about 3%. Now, in just three, three and a half years, whatever you want to call it, there are fewer, fewer homes being sold and then purchased. If they're being sold, they're not selling very well because especially your first-time home buyers, these people can't afford... 7, 8%, 8.5% interest, depending on the loan, depending on your credit, down payment, and all that stuff. These people cannot afford that. What I am seeing not far from my home and all over the city of Richmond is these apartments or condos, they are going up overnight. And I got to thinking, if you don't qualify for a mortgage for a $350,000 home or whatever it happens to be, you can go ahead and just rent an apartment, one year lease, a lot less than a 30-year mortgage. But these people are paying $1,600, $1,800, $2,000 a month in rent that if they had the down payment, if they could qualify, if they could afford the high mortgage rate, their mortgage would be less than their rent. And I always thought it was people that had like disastrous credit. Those are the people that live in apartment complexes for the most part, but that's not entirely true. They are building so many of these. I don't know where all these people are going to come from because there's literally, there's about 1500 units, three different complexes within about five minutes from my house. Now, where are these people? Are there people literally just waiting for these apartments to be built? They're like all over the country watching the news. And when somebody says this huge apartment complex next to Keith is now open, does everyone then just start like running and flying and driving? I just, I don't know where all these people are coming from. I think a lot of these things are going to sit vacant, but you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Okay. COVID. Did we really think that we were never going to hear about this again? Do we really think that as it tailed off in the last six, eight months, however long is it, do you think it went away? Do you think it was going away? If you thought somehow, some way COVID was going to be resurrected, strike again, new variant, you are absolutely right. So apparently there was a leaked memo to what's his name? Alec Jones. I don't listen to him. In my opinion, he's kind of way out there and he yells a lot. And I I don't want to listen to somebody yell a lot on TV, but it appears like a, a lot of different things that a lot of these conspiracy theories or theories or what he thinks might happen in the future. A lot of these have come to fruition. He's, he's fairly accurate when it comes to that kind of thing. Well, apparently somebody from the TSA sent him a memo or sent him a leaked memo that in the middle of September, the federal government is going to require masks in airports, uh, masks on planes, lockdowns are going to start again, and it's all over a new variant. And of course, the variant is some big long name with a decimal point in the middle or something like that. Apparently, according to the okay, so according to the CD, CDC website, the with this variant, you're going to need to get more vaccines and more boosters, a whole different kind. Now, they're saying there is some evidence that the COVID-19 vaccine and boosters will have some effect and maybe mitigate the uh, the effects of the new variant a little bit, but that depends on, on the person. For folks that have the antibodies or some sort of immunity to it, they don't, the CDC does not know if this immunity is going to completely carry over to the new variant or just a portion of it, you'll be partially protected up to, you know, a certain, a certain extent, but obviously they can't, they can't qualify or or quantify, you know, if you have the antibodies, you're 50% immune to the new variant, whatever it happens to be. Okay. I've said this before, when it comes to COVID, when it comes to vaccines, come to boosters, get your information from multiple sources. Don't just go to the CDC. Don't just go to the WHO. Not sure why you'd go there anyway. Get your information from different sites, talk to your doctor, 
Talk to your friend's doctor. Have your friends talk to their doctor and get all the opinions, get all the information, and then you need to make an informed decision just like COVID-19. Are you going to get the whatever, the new boosters, the new vaccine, whatever they think is going to is going to be needed for the new variant? You know, I'll put on my conspiracy theorist hat for a second. And a lot of people saw this coming that lockdowns are going to ramp up. And some people are saying these lockdowns are going to be nothing compared to 2021 and in, in late, early, early 22. This is, that was child's play compared to these lockdowns. And of course the election cycle, uh, 2024, the presidential election, and everyone's like, just how convenient is this? Again, I trust the government as far as I can throw it for the most part. I wouldn't put anything past uh, the current administration or the government as a whole, really. There's so many embedded, you know, bureaucrats in the government themselves and they, you know, both parties that just, that just transcends, you know, all levels of the government. But it's just, you know, one of these, oh, everyone's like, oh, great. How convenient a new COVID uh, variant is, is start, is kicking up, you know, late summer, early fall. And I bet you nickel lockdown and all that good stuff is going to roll all the way into election uh, in, in 2024. So enough of that. We talked about money a little bit, talked about mortgage rates a little bit, and I'm not a financial advisor. That's my little caveat. And, but here are the, here are some things that I do. And people have asked me this before, and I had a few emails, you know, a while back about this. So you have your budget, you know, you have your paycheck, work a little overtime here and there, whatever it happens to be. But for the most part, you know, unless you do, there's, you know, certain types of work that really depends on how much you do and the type of work. But for the most part, probably 90% of us get our paycheck every week, every other week, once a month. And it's pretty it's pretty consistent. It's going to be a few dollars here and there. And, you know, and I've seen paychecks for years and years down to the penny is exactly the same. So you have an idea of how much you're bringing home and you certainly have an idea of your uh, expenses, the stuff that you have to pay for the lights, the water, the, the mortgage, the rent, um, food, gas, all that. And then there's the, you know, entertainment, we eat out, go into a movie, Netflix, Hulu, whatever it happens to be. There's all, all those extra things. So Everyone already has pretty much a good idea of their budget and how much they're going to be able to spend. So you hear some people say, well, you know, if you only had Starbucks on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you'd save whatever, eight, ten dollars. I don't drink Starbucks. And then at eight, ten dollars, that becomes fifty, sixty dollars. And before you know it, you've saved three or four hundred dollars. Or, you know, you cut out the coffee altogether, you cut out the sandwich, the biscuits, whatever it happens to be, and look how much money you're saving. I kind of have a different approach. If I want to get my coffee, I'll get my coffee. My donuts, my pastries, if I want to eat a double cheeseburger instead of a single cheeseburger at lunch, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But I have an idea. I know what I bring home and I know my expenditures. And then I know the the money that I can, I guess, blow in. Oh, I really want another new microphone or I really, I want to splurge and I want to buy a new, a new hard top for the Jeep or something like that. So there's the, the money that you have to decide that you can go ahead and spend it on things if you, uh, if you choose to. Well, what I do is, and I've done this, gosh, I've done this almost forever with my, you know, your bank account, uh, your checking account, savings account, whatever you have, money market, 401, whatever you have. I've gone online uh, for the last several gosh, let's several years and I'll just make a new account. And when I had an RV, I called like the RV maintenance account. And what I would do is I would take some of that money that's kind of left over because I wouldn't have zero in my checking account. There'd be a certain amount of money. And I tried to keep that balance at the end of the month. I tried to keep it within a certain range. Well, I've decided that what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that, let's just say for the sake of conversation, I want to have $1,000 in my checking account, and I'm just pulling this number out on my butt, $1,000 in my checking account in the last few days of the month because I get paid monthly, the last day of the month or the first day of the next month. I'm going to have $1,000. Well, now what I'm going to do is, and what I've done in the past is, at the end of that month, right before that paycheck hits, I'm going to take $100 out of that maybe $200 out of that. And I'm going to do like a direct deposit into that, the RV maintenance fund or rainy day fund, or I want to buy a motorcycle fund, or I need a new roof fund, or my transmission's about ready to fall out of my car fund, whatever it happens to be. And it's, it's kind of a situations where you don't even miss it. So if you have a thousand dollars, make it 900. If you have 500 consistently in your checking account, make it 450, take that $50 and have it automatically withdrawn and deposited into the whatever the heck I want to call it account. And don't look at it. You'd be surprised several weeks, several months later, 
You're like, oh my gosh, look at this month, $200, $1,200, whatever it happens to be. So again, it's money. It's money that you're taking out. You're not even going to remember you're doing it. And if you have an issue, some people find it difficult to save money. If you do it, if you do it that way, it's kind of running in the background and you're not really thinking about it and you'll be really surprised. So that's just, that's just a little trick that I do. And it's not, it's not anything massive, but there's been numerous times that I completely forgot about the, the withdrawal and the deposit into the new account. And I've looked into that account and there was an enormous amount of money. Hey, and you may find yourself instead of RV maintenance or the great vacation tour, you know, fund uh, account, whatever you want to call it. You may find that, oh, I really want that set of golf clubs, that uh, tennis racket. Oh, that new zero turn mower. So go ahead and you're like, I'm going to treat myself. I've got money put away. I've got investments, whatever it happens to be, but don't have buyer's remorse. Don't go get the zero turn mower and just be like, oh, should I? Oh my gosh, what happens? Oh, what happens if soon I buy the mower, then you know the roof collapses over the garage and I have to pay for that. Go ahead and get the mower get the tennis racket, get the golf clubs and go ahead. If that's, if it's something that is not going to totally stretch your budget, if you don't have a major expenditure coming, coming up soon that you were going to use the money for, go ahead and treat yourself, get you the new, whatever it happens to be and have fun with it. Just a little tip that I do just to to save a few bucks here and there. And again, uh, you know, when I'd go on vacation, like a a lengthy vacation, that was going to cost quite a bit flights and all that. I would call it the the vacation fund or I'm going to wherever fund. And you just start dropping money into it. And there were times where I'd work overtime, $200, $300 on the check. I would take all of it and dump it in there. And uh, one time way back in the day when I got a raise and I forget, I forget the, maybe it was $60 a paycheck or $80 a paycheck. Financially, I was okay. I wasn't behind on any bills. So whatever that raise was for that year, you know, let's say it was the the sixty dollars a week. I would take that sixty dollars, and I would put that into that little rainy day account. So even though I got the raise, I get a sixty dollar increase. I'm not. I'm not. Even, I'm just going to pretend I didn't get it, and I put that right into that savings account, and that helped a lot. And that happened to be that was a particular vacation. I forget. Gosh, it was forever ago. But with the flights and the hotel, and I'm you know I want to go to these restaurants and do buy a lot of souvenirs. That's how. I went ahead and, and saved up that money. So that so that really worked for me. So give it a shot. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. And you're like, why am I listening to this guy give me financial advice? I can put money in my account just fine without his advice. So anyway, okay. I said I was going to get into the mailbag. And so I, I do have a few emails that, that have been sitting there. So I'll go ahead and, and check check the mailbag. And I pulled a couple of them out. Uh, one, uh, one person wrote in. And they asked if uh, I carry a firearm. And they also asked that when I was a police officer, when I was off duty, did I carry a firearm? Well, the answer to the off duty, when I was off duty as a police officer, the answer was almost always. Now, I, I had a lot of high profile cases. I put a lot of very bad people in prison for a long period of time. And several of those people uh, made it known to me what they were going to do when they got out. If they got out, they're going to get their cousin or their brother to do whatever. So for that reason, I made sure that I was armed when I was off duty. Plus, I was armed to protect friends and family members, whoever I happened to be with at the time, not against any threats that were made against me, but in the event there's a shooting on the street, uh, we're at a restaurant or a bank being robbed, that sort of thing. Quick sidebar on that. I always told my son that if we were ever out eating, you know, having pizza or whatever at a restaurant and the place got robbed or we were in a bank and the place got robbed, we were going to do everything that the bad man was telling us to do. If he said, give me your wallet, he's getting my wallet. I'll write, give me a Sharpie. I'll write the pen number to my ATM, <laughs> my debit card. And dude, it's all yours. We're not going to do play the hero like the, like that was it movie, the and point break, you know, the security guard reaches for his gun or there was, there was a, a bunch of, there's always somebody always wants to be the hero. So I'm going to be a good eyewitness. And when the police show up, I'm going to provide, uh, you know, the eyewitness description, uh, you know, and what, what the person looked like, no heroes, no movie stuff. I wouldn't do the hero movie stuff if I, if I was alone. And I certainly would not have done that uh, with my son. Now, given that, if it looked like my life or his life was in danger, then, you know, all bets are off. If the bad guy at the bank or whatever starts shooting people, well, then it's on. 
I'm not going to lay there. I'm not going to be a victim. And I'm going to certainly do everything I could do in this fictitious scenario to protect my son. Yeah. Other than that, I'm just like, he was five foot two and he was wearing this and that and his boots. And you know, he, when he ran out of the bank, he ran to the right and I'm just going to be a very good eyewitness. No, no heroics, uh, heroics at all coming from me. Oh, and then as far as now, as far as after I've retired, I do not as much as I did when I was uh, you know, off duty, uh, police officer, but no, but no, I, I, I still carry. And basically what I carry is the same, um, the same firearm, the same sidearm that uh, the police department I worked at had. Now, any additional firearms that I purchase, I'm going to purchase, um, uh, either that same model, probably, you know, in a, a compact version, or I'm going to purchase that same brand, maybe a different caliber. But to me, um, because of muscle memory and how many rounds I shot when I was a police officer, I want the gun to feel, if it's a different firearm, I want that gun to feel as close to how my duty weapon felt a- as I can get it. Because everything is muscle memory. Everything is, you know, hand on the, you know, on the gun, on the holster, coming out, finger. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just ingrained on, in you if you're a police officer and retired military. So, in the event I'm put in a stressful situation, you always revert back to your training in a stressful situation. I don't want something to feel different. I don't want the trigger guard to feel different, the grip, my hand, the way, you know, the thumb, I wrap my thumb. I don't want that to feel different or different enough that I'm going to notice it. Because if you're put into a situation like that and um, you're going to have to draw your weapon. Someone's already pointing a weapon at you, at you. You're already at a serious disadvantage. I don't want that. To, and it wouldn't be like, oh, wow, nice grip, Keith. It, it would just be something subtle. And it just may take just that millisecond that my brain thinks that and hears that when that, that millisecond needs to be focused down range at the threat. So there you go. Another quick email. Somebody uh, wrote and asked if I had a bug out plan. No. I don't. I don't have a you know a cabin in the hills. I don't have a secret hiding place. And so I haven't done a lot of research on bugging out. To me, you're you're getting away from the area that you know. So I guess if you stay in your house, you're bugging in. There's so many variables to a bugging out. Is it civil unrest? Is it a natural disaster? Now, if you have to go because of a natural disaster, fire, earthquake, then obviously we're going. But you know, in a situation where we leave the house and we choose to leave the house, that's that's going to be a tough one. It's not exactly Mad Max, a bunch of marauders running up and down the roads. But as much as I kind of make a joke about that, tell me you haven't thought about that. If something was to happen and you're away from your home and you have to make it to your house or you have to evacuate, you have to bug out of your house. Don't tell me you didn't think about just going down the street and there's a bunch of people with lawn mowers and, and bed frames that they've thrown to make a little checkpoint or a barricade because they're going to smash your windows, pull you out of your car, whatever assaults you, or just take your car, take whatever supplies. Because again, 90% of the folks out there are not even prepared for a three-day loss of power, water, you know, and, and access to food. So 90% of the people don't even have a three-day plan. You can imagine if the poop really hits the fan, do they have 90% have no idea what they're going to do. But I tell you what, they heard about that guy down the street that has a garden and chickens and what, I bet he's got food. I bet those chickens have eggs. I bet he hasn't eaten all the eggs. Let's go guys. Let's go get some eggs and some chickens. They're coming right to your house. And that's a whole different podcast for a whole different day. All right, folks, I've got more emails, but I'll, I'll, I'll cover those at a different time. But again, folks, thank you so much uh, for stopping in and listening. Again, every podcast gets more and more listens, more and more traction. People from, I think, last week, uh, 12 different countries, countless numbers of cities, most podcasts, uh, like 80, yeah, about 85% of the audience is here in the United States. The last podcast, it was like 80%. So picking up a lot of people in Australia, all over the world. And, and certainly, certainly very happy to, to have you all come in and listen to me ramble for 20, 25 minutes, whatever it happens to be. And as always, be safe out there, take care of one another, and until next time. Thanks for listening to the Common Sense Practical Prepper Podcast. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, help spread the word by leaving a rating and review. 